Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Indie Thoughts. Today we have a very renowned writer with us by the name of Niloy Roy Chaudhary. He's a dear friend, he's a dear writer and he's been talking about health, he's been talking about mental health and he's been talking about challenges in the corporate life in his books. And today we will be discussing with him that how he has been able to go through these challenges in his own professional life and how he has been able to go through the ups and downs of a corporate life. So I'll request Niloy to please introduce himself and please share that what he has been going through in his journey of 20 plus years of uh, corporate life and how he has been able to move from one responsibility in a corporate life to another responsibility today as a speaker, a motivational speaker and as a writer. So Niloy, please introduce him yourself. Uh, good afternoon, Gaurav. Uh, it's a pleasure and privilege, uh, you know, having you here and speaking to you this morning. Uh, so I basically, um, uh, I, I'm a, I have about uh, more than 23 years of uh, experience, uh, corporate experience, as you would put it. So I'm a bit older than what you had to search. <laughs> so um, I have uh, most of my experience has been in sales and marketing. I'm a mechanical engineer by profession and an MBA. And then I've been essentially doing uh, technology sales for uh, the past 23 years. I had a brief one year stint uh, at uh, a bank where I was, uh, you know, trying to do something out of my comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't really work out, so I decided that I back to, uh, you know, where I belong the best. Uh, so, you know, I have been, uh, uh, you know, selling uh, software solutions around uh, CAT CAM, around document management, around uh, RPA, uh, around uh, data, uh, software uh, consulting services. I've also handled. Uh, Sales of telecom-based solutions also, and I've been blessed and, uh, pri uh, and privileged to have worked with large customers globally. I think uh, right from Australia to uh, California, uh, with system in integration partners as well. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, the the COVID uh, uh, pandemic changed me somewhat. So uh, mm -hmm. what was you know going on as a growing concern? I saw that things have really changed. Uh, so I saw so much of debt, so much of destruction, so much uncertainty. Uh, so earlier this year, I decided to, you know, start a new journey uh, in terms of probably trying to give back to uh, uh, society. So I joined a, an organization that believes in the democratization of healthcare, uh, especially once that now COVID has kind of receded into an endemic. There are lots of other diseases which are coming out and which really affect employee health. So things like cancer and uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, which is very prevalent in this part of the world. Mm. So uh, our endeavor is to ensure that uh, the vast population, no matter where they live, they could be living in Delhi or Durban or uh, you know about any other countries, Djibouti, anywhere. So they should have the same access to healthcare mm. as a person sitting in America or Australia or Europe. So, awesome, awesome journey that I've, I've been doing on the uh, on the uh, professional side. Uh, I also started my literary journey uh, this year and uh, I've authored my first book in uh, July and uh, the second book is just launched last week. Awesome. Congratulations for your literal journey and you really love to hear about your uh, two books which you have written. What is the basis? What are the audience? What is the topic that you've covered in your book? Yeah. Some glimpse about your books. What is it all about? Sure, sure. So I think uh, uh, most of my both of my books have been uh, about uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, drawing upon my experiences, my vast professional and personal experiences. So professionally, personally, I've seen a lot of uh, ups and downs. So if I compare myself to others around me, so maybe mm -hmm. be that successful in terms of material wealth, in terms of you know what they call a settling down and. Uh, possessions and all that but what i have had is i've had multiple starts restarts dealing with uncertainty and uh, in today's scenario especially after covid we find a lot of uncertainty there whatever we've taken for granted it does not exist there's a lot of negativity around us mm -hmm. so traditionally people have been telling us that uh, shun negativity avoid negative people don't seek the light forget about mm -hmm. the dark uh, exercise work out meditate uh, what I've seen is that in COVID, this hugely negative incident actually re, re, uh, actually united the world. Mm, true. People who were strangers earlier, 
have started helping each other, irrespective of how much they earn, irrespective of where they live, religion. So a pandemic has brought up the best in humanity. I mean, there could be no better example of negativity installing positive outcomes. So that was the first part of the, the first book. So it was called, Bet You Won't Read This, Embrace Negative to Be Positive. So what I said is that instead of shunning negative emotions, you could actually use the negative emotions in your daily activities, in your daily life, on yourself, on others, and, great, and have great positive outcomes. That was the first book. Uh, the second book was uh, essentially about uh, the fact that whenever we encounter a crisis, uh, a very personal crisis or a, uh, or a you know, black swan event, instantly our instinct takes over. You know, mm. we, we go down to the Maslow's theory of needs into the survival. There, the basic hum human nature that we have of helping out others, the uh, uh, empathy, inspiration, uh, all goes down the drain. Mm. So what I've uh, said in the second book is, which is just launched the last week, is that how to combat such a, uh, uh, such a, such a, a frightful experience ourselves, you know, get a hold of yourself, and in fact, move into what I call the storm's eye, which is the calmest part of the storm, where mm. you could, you know, leverage your intelligence, your intuition, other things to have great outcomes and to inspire others. So that's very great, very great. So that's the echo, that's the ethos of Indy Thoughts also. You rightly pointed out that how we can be in the center of the storm and fight with the negativities in our life. So pandemic has actually brought out that best in people. So you're also bringing out that uh, the echoes or that main principle that we are fighting that animalistic attitude of fight and flight. The first book and the second book is what are the ethos and the backbone of empty thoughts, the value which we project and the value which we want to bring out with this uh, this podcast or this podcast. We want to bring out this positivity from all and bring this positivity in the society from our uh, 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 from our contribution towards the society. So when we thought about bringing you as a guest, we thought that yes, you are also going through the uh, challenges and you have actually brought those challenges to sure. your victory. You might have changed the change direction of the uh, challenges, to change the issues, but you're still continuing, you're still growing, you're still uh, bringing positivity around you and you're smiling like anything. So that is the mental health and that is the positivity which we want to bring out this podcast of us. Thanks a lot, Lina. Thanks a lot for bringing out your positivity. And the, the books, and if you can show the books, the, the yeah, you'll put the links to buy the books on the app. So that itself is instilling a negative emotion of challenge. So if right. you children, uh, you might tell our children that uh, please walk, please have this, please mm -hmm. do this. They may may not agree, but the moment you say that, I don't think you can do it. That's right. when you went and do it. So challenge is right. negative emotion that instills a lot of positive outcomes. Actually, bringing out the Creativity to challenge the. And uh, this is the uh, book that is just launched now. It's okay. called Devil's Eye. Awesome, awesome. So we'll be putting the links for purchasing these books uh, in the description section. So if our audience really wants to understand about life, about struggling uh, through life and being in that calm, which is the eye of the storm, then definitely please read these books. Sure. Perfect. Are or one more thing that has really helped is the, the field that we are in, IT. Yes. IT right. Right. So I think uh, earlier, uh, IT was, uh, I think, right after the, after the internet, IT became, uh, IT was more of a community kind of a build-up, right? Mm -hmm. Changing ideas mm -hmm. and all. Then when the ERP wave came, that's when IT was being leveraged for business. And mm -hmm. in today's scenario, if you see, one of the positive outcomes of COVID has been the digital transformation that everyone is doing. We're talking about employee experience, customer experience. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, the technologists, you know, like you and I, we realize mm -hmm. technology has only, uh, you know, four possible uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, I mean, technology in itself is nothing. Either you improve user experience, 
that is a customer experience or employee experience, you improve the productivity, you optimize costs, or you adhere to compliance. Mm -hmm. There can be no other uh, use of technology, and it's typically a combination of it. So I think COVID has also brought about uh, amazing digital transformation. You see AI, you see RPA, uh, mm -hmm. UI, UX, you see cloud. Mm -hmm. Organizations are going digital, and I think the world will never be the same again. The way we are interacting, that would be a, one of the predominant ways rather than F2M. So, right, right, right. right. You rightly said that technology till the ERP wave was always a community based. Today, when we see that it has an enterprise effect, and people are still launching the community uh, uh, products. We still see that they have a product which is a community edition which uses the community for testing their tools. They have their community tools for, uh, for having a wider spread, for having that community reach. They are benefiting out of the knowledge uh, which they get out of the testing which the community does as a community effort. Then they uh, use it in the, their enterprise edition. So, yes, to your point, this is going to be so if you see the lots of, the, uh, you know, there are wonderful use cases coming up. I think the other thing that Gaurav, which I've seen is, in, initially it was about transactions. Hmm. If you automating a sales process, automating inventory management and all that. Today it's about data. We have the data. And we have the data in disparate form, formats. You have Salesforce pumping in CRM data. You have the manufacturing in uh, SAP or Oracle. Then you have, uh, you know, cornerstone on demand. You know, hmm. or, or an info doing HCM. The other right. data. What we need is, are, is insights. Right. We need to make sense of those vast blocks of data to take mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, interestingly, what has come up now is what we call as uh, 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 super teams. Earlier True. it was human or AI, but True. now it's humans will take decisions, obviously mm -hmm. based on based on intuition. But mm -hmm. the AI portion would provide those data points, those analytics. Uh, those what if analysis to equip humans to take that decision. I think right, the, right. uh, or AI is now human and AI. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right in saying that. But the data is the king now. And with, with AI, yeah, I was listening to one of the podcasts where the audience was talking about AI and data and how to use that. The speaker said there is only one difference that makes AI versus uh, the human being is that AI will give you data, will give you options. The action, the taking action or not taking the action is with the human being. The interpretation will be with the human being. What they do with the data or how they use that data is actually based upon the human being. Let's see if today's data says that the pandemic is a great havoc. There will be some people who will be scared. There will be people who will be uh, concerned. But there will be some countries will be taking the action beforehand, becoming that proactive, bringing a proactive approach. That is what human being or, or that uh, actionable is still with the human being. So the third wave, fourth wave or anything of technology, action is still with the human being. So I just hope it doesn't happen. And <laughs> yes, yes. One good thing is that now uh, we have to be prepared always. And mm. you know, all that I've seen is that uh, in this world of AI, robotics, uh, machine learning, the human touch is so important. Very true. Touch points. So every touch point with a human being, right, right from the employees. Now, today, an employee is our biggest customer. You cannot yeah. have conversations with unhappy employees and <clears> happy <throat> customers. Maybe for a quarter, maybe for a for a two quarters, but that's it. Every touch point, right. every touch point has to have empathy, has to have emotional intelligence. Yes. So the world of human beings has, in fact, uh, I think we have so much to learn and skill. I mean, look at the True. pandemic. People like me, I mean, I never wrote, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think I ever wrote a letter in my life also. <laughs> and, 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 and mm. We should not be looking at, uh, you know, uh, automating mundane tasks. We should be mm. harnessing what we have here, our mm. human brain. And I have a chapter in my new book on this. So awesome. we should awesome. push AI and harness our brain. 
that is there uh, that is what nila that brings the difference between a human being and the person with experience using that experience that gut feeling that is that is as the human science says that there are two brains there is a normal brain and then this gut feeling so what we have seen with your experience what our experiences is that gut feeling at times takes precedence that our knowledge about anything else about any other data point that is what it makes us different from uh an ai or maybe uh, a genre of different people who do not take decisions and they just sit on that thank you thank you a lot for bringing that out absolutely so intuition intuition is a very powerful eye in which i would think about so intuition of course intuition some people are born with it but you can cultivate it mm-hmm. the more experience so an intuition is you know it, it's it's your uh, it's your unconscious mind talking to you right. unconscious right. mind i think it's like a wrong mm-hmm. and uh And, and the question yes. is like that. Yes. So and it's that is, tough. Yeah. It's, it's logical. It is processing, just like uh, you know a bot would do or a, or a machine or it would do. It's 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 doing that. And somehow, in absence of all data yeah. points, it, it, it provides a solution to you. True. True. Awesome. The intuition. Awesome. Awesome. So moving on from this topic to a little lighter note, Eloy. Uh, let's say we are today sitting in uh, 2021. and uh, we would move to 1991 you're again that youthful that chirpy young boy uh, still thinking about getting into a job or a corporate or a, a entrepreneur what is it that niloy would want to do and if he gets the gift of all the technology gift of ai ml gift of every technology which is available now and when we were in 1991 1992 what would you do what would you do all of this technology and what would be your uh, design so i think uh, see for me the life uh, life beauty has been the journey not the destination right. yeah. if you ask me frankly uh, even although you know i like to say that you know i'm probably a i mean a successful failure let me put it like that but <laughs> i don't like to change anything the beauty of the yeah. life life has been uh, you know uh, the the uncertainty you know uh, dabbling into area so i've dabbled into many areas mm-hmm. and that the uh, perspective i have the experience of shop floor i have the experience of the customer i have the experience of technology uh, of course uh, there are certain uh, uh, do's and don'ts some strong don'ts in my time if i would have uh, you know maybe received those uh, though i would i would have probably you know had a big bit of a delta but mm-hmm. uh, at that time i don't think i would have wanted to change it my journey has been varied it has cut across uh, a lot of functional areas technology areas uh, human aspects uh, cultural aspects uh, i don't think i would uh, you know like to change that um, and uh, given a chance i would like to probably go back in time armed mm. with some boundaries maybe sure sure person awesome. person journey is their own journey they mm-hmm. have their experience of joys and disappointments and mm-hmm. even Like to point them out, they have to go through the journey themselves and experience it for them. Very, very, very nicely answered, Nilay. Thank you. Another question on the lighter note: that let's say today uh, you want to get any celebrity or any world famous personality who not in the world now, and you want to give them life. Who would that person be? That and why you would give that life? that one person and why so, so that is what i would want to know from you yeah and why do you want to get these people to the earth okay good that's <laughs> in fact uh, i i th- i can think of four or five uh, i think i would be fascinated uh, if possible to have mahatma gandhi ji back in fact uh, out of whatever whatever enormous things he's done for the world we all know that i think the aspect of customer centricity Mm. And that is something that is universal. I just imagine, uh, you know, a gentleman at that particular point in time, uh, where you know, of course, the area where he was in, and where uh, you know, India, South Africa, they're not really capitalistic. Mm. Right. The fact that the customer is the most important person, and he's doing us a favor, you know, and though, and there are many other things that he said, mm. those are universally bound. And mm. what Abhijit said will hold even more true in today's scenario. Mm-hmm. I would I would be fascinated to see what uh, how he would leverage technology into this scenario. 
maybe my propagating is worth better, maybe having holograms or I don't know what, but uh, it'll be fascinating to see how, uh, what, what he makes of this world today. And I think in some ways, the vision that he had of the world of being equal, the internet has done that to a large extent, but still somehow we have our biases. Yes. Yes. Uh, I would really uh, be fascinated to see uh, his ethos of equality. Now we have the internet and all, mm -hmm. of course, after all of us have a digital identity, which is you know common. Mm -hmm. Looking at an email ID or an IP address, you can't make it out whether I'm in Tanzania or whether I'm in Tokyo. It doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. So I would love to see what Bapu would do in today's service. I would. I would also want to see him. And I know that you're Bapu's fan, and we all need Bapu with us. More of Bapu's pictures or uh, notes in our wallet. So more of Gandhi in our wallet, <laughs> and more. Gandhiji in our bank balances. Thank you. Thank you, Unila. Uh, one I, last. So I think we, uh, if we go and uh, go beyond the symbolic gesture, yeah. if we invite what we say or what he said, that's better. Like similarly prayers. Right. It's good to, you know, pray. But if you just reflect on the words that you're uttering, it'll make a lot of difference. Yeah. Very deep. Very deep. One last point, Unila, uh, is that uh, what is it that Viloy wants to give as a word of advice or one anecdote or guidance to our audience who is new to the corporate life or who are still struggling, who are still going through the uh, uh, challenges of their life? So how is Viloy use these positivities and how will Viloy's uh, words would, uh, give that, that starting point or would give them the... Uh, one uh, and say word of advice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, yeah. So uh, I think I'll talk about two, okay, if you sure. permit. Please, please. We're doing we're doing you know we're doing our daily tasks and all that. We should right. stop rather than what, how, why. Mm. We should it the why, and that holds true of people who you know who've lost their inspiration, you know mm. who are feeling monotonous. Always find out why. And whatever you do, you should try to, you know, make a difference, leave a legacy behind. So all of us, right, someone earns a, a Porsche, a Lamborghini, you know, someone earns a, you know, mid, uh, I mean, a mid, mid side sedan. But the, the point is that after you depart, how would the world remember you? Mm. The way we're talking about Bapu, and in fact, you know, 200, 300, you know, maybe millennia, Later, people will be talking. That's a legacy. Mm -hmm. it can't be but we can leave behind our legacy in some way. And the best legacy to leave behind is to dedicate a part of your life for others. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in technology, programming and all is good. But try to see how technology can benefit humans. Mm -hmm. IT has gone everywhere. Clean energy, automotive. So try, if so, if you are able to figure out how we can make a difference. I think that will that is also the, the I think the second key point. Great, great. It is good to live, but how you live and what difference you made, those are important. Perfect, perfect. So thanks a lot, Neloy, for thanks a lot for giving us your time, your anecdotes, your pointers, your secret sauce, what you have been using in your life and how people can use that secret sauce in their life. And use for bringing that victory in their life. Also, uh, I, also on your point, I would say that it's like Alexander. He said that when I die, I keep my hands outside my coffin so that people can see that I am not taking any wealth with me. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So all the best. Thanks a lot. We'll also be in touch with you in the second season. All the best. Thank you. And do let us know when you write the third. Thank you. Thank you, Niloy.